something that has kept coming up for me is just like we don't heal alone we need each other and this club makes me think of that we could create alone but why not create with other people who are also creating the same thing it just makes it that much more delightful and fun and fulfilling having a group is exponential to growth because we're not designed to do it alone Welcome to The Graced Podcast, a space for everyday magic for your everyday life. We do this through rituals, aligning yourself to your soul's purpose, and creating alchemy to heal our mind, body, and spirits so that you can bring in more love and joy, manifest your desires, and believe in your dreams. Listen and watch over at gracedrong.com slash podcast and on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, and all the places you can find me on social media. Now let's dive in to today's episode. Welcome to The Graced Podcast, a space where we talk about everyday magic for your everyday life. Today's guest is Justine Shu, who happens to be one of my Create Your Deck Club students. In this episode, we'll hear more about Justine's experience inside the Create Your Deck Club, which is inside the Mystic Mondays Coven. We talk about the link between our spiritual journeys and how they're often tied to our creative expression, especially when it comes to the world of tarot how to maintain creative sovereignty, making our own creative choices, when it is so easy to be influenced by others, including our teachers. If you've ever wanted to create your own deck, check out the Create Your Deck Club and join our membership with deck creators from all over the world. If you're curious or even hesitant about getting started, the first step is to get going. And what better way to do that than to surround yourself with other deck creators who are on the same journey as you. You can check out more information about the Create Your Debt Club at mysticmondays.com. Now let's dive into this episode. Hi, Justine. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So today we're talking about your experience with the Create Your Deck Club so far. And I just wanted to ask you, how has it been being a part of the Create Your Deck Club? Being part of the Create Your Deck Club has been really nourishing and just really supportive. Every time I've joined a Zoom call, It's been really exciting to meet other creators from around the world, and it feels very intimate and safe and just really exciting to connect with other tarot creators and artists. Because I think creating any sort of piece of art, creating your own tarot deck, while there's so many tarot decks out there, can feel a bit really daunting, but it can be kind of isolating at the same time because it feels a little maddening. You're just like, in this artistic (laughs) process by yourself creating a tarot deck like what does that even mean you know sometimes in different phases so to have a group of people to reflect back and hear their stories and hear what they're struggling with and to hear what they're tangibly and practically working on just the combination of everything is really helpful to partake in yeah yeah it's such a great group of people you know getting together and i feel like the commonality of creating a tarot deck or an oracle deck is really special because you can't really explain that to somebody else in your life who's not really doing those things and i find that you know when i'm making a deck and i know that other people in the group have shared when they're creating cards, they're going through lessons of the cards too. So it's a very spiritual thing that you're bringing into your practice as you're creating this. So it's hard to explain to the other people in your life who might not be going through that process too. So yeah, thank you. I'm glad it feels safe and intimate. And, you know, I'm curious, what drew you to join the Create Your Deck Club? Well, I've been following Mystic Monday for years. I don't even know how long, but it feels like a very long time. So I'm familiar with your work. I'm familiar with your face. And I've been subscribed to Mystic Mondays and your newsletters for a long time. And so when I saw that you were offering your invitations up to join, I just felt an intuitive pull. Even though at the time, I wasn't even thinking about creating a tarot deck. I was focused on other creative personal projects. But tarot is one of my soul languages and one of my passions and one of my loves. So I just like, why not? I feel this pull. So it really felt like an intuitive pull. And also the fact that you are a fellow woman of color, that is also what drew me in. 
for me myself on my own personal spiritual journey, there haven't been many other people that look like me who are doing similar things and have similar perspectives, specifically even just in the tarot world. So to have that reflection and to have someone who might have similar experiences in the world was a huge drawing for me personally. And right away when we met, I could tell that the way you hold space for people, just how grounded you are in your approach and how you just really respect people's spiritual sovereignty, which is really important to me. I knew that this was a a really important group to be a part of. Oh, I love that. That warms my heart. (laughs) Yeah. Spiritual sovereignty. Can you tell us more about what that means? Yeah, it's something I've been thinking about and really exploring and diving deeper into the last few years. I grew up with a heavy religious background and kind of broke away from that in my early 20s and kind of shut down spirituality for a while there. And it was actually tarot that brought me back in. And it was a little portal that brought me back into spirituality. So where I'm kind of currently at with my own spiritual journey is I think it's just important to really acknowledge and recognize one's own spiritual authority and your own wisdom that each of us has. And I think that's what draws me into tarot. And reading tarot for other people or working with tarot is like, I'm just a mirror and I just reflect back what you already know. And these cards and interpretations just help bring that out. And I think the more people who are in their centers, therefore in their spiritual sovereignty and authority can then kind of be better citizens of the world. Like we can actually be better collaborators and work through hardships together, the struggles in just like a more cohesive and aligned way. Yeah, definitely. I also love the language that you use describing tarot as soul language. And there is something about using tarot cards where when you're looking at the cards, you know, images can really evoke a lot more than just words. It can evoke other images. It can evoke language from your spirit guides. It can evoke emotions and feelings. And I think there's just so much in there that your soul can decipher that perhaps like a normal language couldn't. And that's really important because when you're creating a deck, you're also inscribing and inserting your soul into a deck. And so it's very personal, you know, whatever you're creating and everybody has their own different journey with the cards. And I think the most important thing is to just allow yourself and your journey to shine and speak through the cards in a way that feels the most authentic to you because the way that you see Let's say the full card is probably different than how I'm making the full card. Even though there's so many different expressions of tarot decks nowadays, each one still has a special voice and a special gift to share because it's sharing a piece of you that can then help somebody on their journey, whether it's a past version of yourself that you're making this deck for, which I find a lot of people tend to make cards and decks and other, I think, spiritual kind of products for a version of themselves that needed that, that didn't have that. So beautifully said. I think that's been a major takeaway in the last few months in through the Tarot Deck Club is that, you know, I'm creating this to get to know myself, as well as creating this as a service to people who see things the same way or need things the same way that I do. So it's It's like, I just love tarot (laughs) in that you can just work with it in so many different ways. It's, there's a standardized aspect to it, but in no means is there any dogma. And so again, it really invites people to into their own spiritual sovereignty to get to know their own version of intuition and their own gifts. And, you know, like the full card, it can appear in one season in your life and be interpreted in one way. And then five years down the road in a different season in your life be interpreted in a whole different way. So that alone is fascinating to me. And how something I also have really taken away from the club is how healing the process is in creating your deck. Because when I first joined, I was like, I don't know if I should be doing this right now. And it's personally, I've been working through so many scarcity wound, not being enough. I don't deserve to create a deck. There's so many decks out there. What do I have to offer? So you would like think joining a club of people who are also creating their own deck, there would be 
some level of competition or comparison, but that has not been the case at all. If anything, it's like expanded my perspective on everything to allow for a more abundant mindset and that there is enough for everyone in this world. I truly do believe that. And it's something I want to keep carrying because I think it's important to energize that. And seeing how all of the unique people in the club have their own versions and goals and intentions with what they're trying to produce or or create. It's just like, it blows my mind. Like, yes, there truly is enough for everyone. And multiple decks can feed so many people because they're so, we're all unique beings. So why wouldn't these tarot decks also mirror that? Yeah, that's a really beautiful way of sharing that. And I really feel that too. I feel like everyone has a unique perspective of looking at something. And that is a really cool thing about tarot is that the full card can transform no matter what phase you're in. You know, you can look at that in a different way when you're in a different phase of life. And I feel like that's part of the transformative part of tarot that people can use their entire lifetime. So how has being a part of the Create Your Deck Club helped you in your deck creation process or in life in general? It's a good question. Joining the Create Your Deck Club was also a commitment to my own artistic practice, also a commitment to develop, to like maintaining an abundant mindset. So it's a commitment to show up how I truly want to be, which is as an artist. So, you know, when I first initially joined the club, I wasn't sure like I didn't have any ideas of what this deck even was going to be I thought I was going to create a tarot deck (laughs) but what has actually been germinating has been maybe potentially more of an oracle deck which I'm very surprised by but I'm just kind of going with it (laughs) so it's just helping me hold space the create your own tarot deck club is just kind of it feels like just these like pillars like a a safe container (laughs) that's this beautiful container that's holding space for me while I dream and envision and germinate what this potential deck will be. It could be 10 years from now. Who knows? (laughs) Because I think that ideating phase or like that part in the creative process where you're just gathering ideas and like putting together your Pinterest boards or sketching ideas out or just dreaming, it can be very vulnerable and very insular and very sensitive. And I love that personal creative process. But there's something about, I think, creating a tarot deck because it's meant to be shared for the most part. Maybe you could create a tarot deck for yourself and that could be something too. But for the most part, we're creating tarot decks to be shared with other people. So there's just something special about this that even in these initial stages, I'm already kind of opening it up and sharing in ways that I feel comfortable with. That is also feeding the process, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I feel like life is a mirror in a lot of ways where you walk out and you see symbols if you're open to seeing symbols. Like you might see a dolphin and that might mean something to you. And because it has meaning, you put it in your deck or something like that. And I feel like the breadth of symbology that we can accumulate in our lifetimes, we can also embed into our decks to also give meaning to someone else on their journey. And I think life lends itself to your creative process in that way, because your experiences will reflect in the cards because your experiences have meaning to you and what your filter is trying to create and communicate through your own experiences. And I feel like the experiences that you have then find expression through artistic mediums. So it could be through this deck, it could be through singing, it could be through a lot of different things. But I feel like with a deck, there's definitely an intention of sharing that spiritual journey with somebody else who could also use your wisdom because of your experiences through your cards. And I feel like sometimes when we come into this for the first time, like I feel like the scarcity beliefs of like, whether it's like, well, I don't have time for this, or I don't have money for this, or I don't have enough wisdom for this. Like, who am I to even create my own deck? I think that's very normal, especially if you You've never done this before and you want to feel assured that you are on the right path and that, you know, this would be worth your time and et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to come up with. Because I think the mind wants to come up with 
I don't want to call it excuses, but if this is like something you really want to do, and if, you know, you're always going to find a reason not to do something. But if you listen to that intuitive pull, like you did, you know, something in you said yes, even though logically you could come up with reasons to not do this, there was something pulling you more towards your spiritual truth or your spiritual sovereignty, as you said, where you wanted to express that side of yourself. You wanted to, you know, commit to your artistry. And sometimes committing means doing something you've never done before, being a part of something you've never been a part of before, or, you know, being in a group of people and being able to show a vulnerable side of yourself, having never met these people <laughs> in real life. But still, there's an energy with everyone here who wants to commit and have the same intention of creating something that is bigger than oneself and sharing their gift and light and journey within these cards. So I feel like everyone that is drawn to be a part of the Create Your Deck Club is here for a reason, here to support one another, here to share their light in their own special and unique way. And I know you mentioned competition, but Absolutely. There's no competition at all because everyone has just a very special and unique way of expressing themselves. And I feel like that is really what lends everyone in the group to gain, I think, a wider breadth of perspective because we're all so different, but we all share that common interest of, you know, tarot and oracle decks and how to create our own. Totally. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Everyone is so supportive <laughs> and everyone is present and I, something that has kept coming up for me since leo season maybe is just like we don't heal alone we need each other and it just this club makes me think of that we could create alone but why not create with other people who are also creating the same thing it just makes it that much more delightful and fun and fulfilling downloaded the Mystic Mondays app yet? Well, if you haven't, what are you waiting for? If you want to take the Mystic Mondays tarot and oracle cards with you wherever you go for your daily rituals, this is the app for you. Whether you're on the go or happen to be traveling without a physical deck, the Mystic Mondays app has your back. It's available to download in both the iOS and Android stores. Now, back to the episode. Yeah, absolutely. I know earlier you mentioned isolation and I actually, that's something I went through. <laughs> I kind of wish that I had a create your deck club or a group of people who are creating along with me because when you are creating, it can be a very lonely process, especially if you're going through some spiritual stuff at the same time and you're like learning the lessons of the cards and you know, that can be a lot for anyone. And I agree with you. I think you know, going through moments of isolation has also taught me where I'm like, having a group is exponential to growth, because we're not designed to do it alone. You know, I mentioned dolphins earlier, and dolphins have pods. <laughs> and so this is like a pod of people who are gathered together to create something really special. And even though I feel like creating a deck is such an individual journey, you know, because you're really deep in your own process of what you want to express through these cards. But it's also, you know, very group centric in that you don't have to go through it alone. Totally. You don't have to. And it's again, back to agency and choice and sovereignty. Like these are things that we can choose for ourselves. I'm so curious for you, because you've mentioned a few times how you're kind of experiencing or learning specific or all of the tarot cards as you're creating. Are there any cards that pop out or circumstances that pop out when you're creating your first, or actually really any deck? Yeah, I really connect with the Magician card because it's one of my tarot birth cards. And I do notice, like lately, I've been really good at manifesting like food. <laughs> Like if I'm thinking of a food, it'll just like come into my environment somehow. And I'm like, wow, I definitely manifested that. I just thought about it and it just like came to me. So yeah, with the tarot deck, I feel like, you know, a year before I actually made my deck, tarot reader had told me that I was going to make a deck. And at the time I was receiving a lot of tarot readings myself because I found that to be therapeutic in my own spiritual journey of like awakening and things like that. So it actually took 
some time for me to plant that seed. You know, the seed was germinating in my brain, like, okay, like I want to make a deck and I'm clearing space and I need time to do this. And so I remember having a tower type of year, the following year where like all these things happened where that were out of my control. I ended up moving like three times without wanting to security deposits stolen, etc. And I remember, you know, moving into my secure apartment <laughs> at the end of the year, I locked myself in my apartment in December of that year. And I just knocked out the first 22 cards. But I feel like sometimes when you're about to make a major life transition, some tower moments tend to happen. And I think that was it for me where I think the bigger lesson behind that was really feeling security within myself, feeling safe within myself. And a lot of ancestral stuff can come in. So, you know, I have a ancestral history of people being refugees, like my parents are refugees. So it's not even that long ago where people were fleeing their homes just to feel safe or just to get away from war or things like that. And I I think that when people in our lineage do not face their trauma, then it passes down the lineage. And, you know, I do feel like part of my role in this lifetime is to help clean up the bloodline. So part of the cleaning up the trauma of having to flee different places and et cetera, et cetera, I think came up that year. But a lot of it, I feel like life throws you things to prepare you for the next chapter of life. So whatever that was, whether it was feeling safe within myself, no matter what is happening around me, not relying on external factors to affect me, because that can happen quite a lot, whether you're, you know, listening to the news or having a reaction to someone cutting you off in traffic. I think it's a lesson in still feeling at peace, no matter what is going on around you. And I'm still put through those lessons, <laughs> but I do feel like everything happens for a reason. I do believe that. And ultimately, I feel like those experiences helped me to become stronger. So I suppose two cards are coming up now because Tower Moment happened right before I made my deck. But I think that actually was a catalyst for me to take it seriously and to sit down and actually make the first 22 cards. And then the following year, there was another tower moment after the Kickstarter was crowdfunded and shipped out. Like the cards actually scratched when they shipped out. And so I didn't expect that to happen at all. And, you know, some people were really mad about it. And um, I felt really bad because I had no idea that was going to happen. And that was another tower moment. And and I feel like that prepares me to be prepared the next time I do it or the next time something happens. But I do feel like the tower allows you to rebuild structure. And I don't think at the time, because I was just starting out, I didn't have much structure in building the tarot deck that ended up turning into a business. <laughs> But a lot of this about creating the Create Your Deck Club also is like, I wish I had these resources back then of like how to do this and how to avoid most of your stock getting damaged <laughs> so that people aren't pissed at you because you didn't know that was going to happen or how to order a test sample deck so that you could potentially avoid these potential challenges. There are a lot of things that went well in my journey, but there are a lot of things that didn't go well too. And hopefully, you know, the lessons that are in the portal can help people avoid the same type of mistakes that I made. Yeah, like I love hearing more of like the in-depth story. I mean, out of your voice, because I know stories are kind of shared in little sound bites across your courses, or we, we kind of talk about it in the Zoom calls, but to hear it in at length and at, at its depth, I think is very impactful, especially the connection with like the ancestors and the ancestral lineage healing that happens through even just feeling safe in your body and having the privilege and the opportunities to fully feel our emotions and let them go. <laughs> and, and so that we can thrive, not just survive, then going through hardships of your own, and then passing that on to almost like the descendants or like the people who are walking a similar path and are building that for themselves and their own personal journeys, I guess. So yeah, I just I really respect the type of work and the way the approach, you're not just selling products. <laughs> it's definitely not just a product. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like it's very much an authentic expression of you, you know, and I feel like 
as a collective, we're moving more into how to make money while also being really passionate about what we want to express and selling things in a way that's very authentic to what we want to do that is also beneficial to the collective growth of the planet. That's what I feel like this is about. This is not just about, and there's no shade to anybody who's making money the way they need to make money. This is absolutely a way to honor a part of yourself that feels deserving of getting paid for something that you feel like is a unique expression of yourself and that you want to authentically express and that you want to help people with. And making a deck also, there's a lot of work that goes into it, no doubt. But when you have a finished product, then you can sell that finished product exponentially. And then we can get into like quantum selling (laughs) where... A lot of the times I think healers, there's just not enough time in this 3D field for one-to-one sessions all of the time. If Especially if you want to help people at maximum, you know, where people at scale want to come across what you do in your product and things of that nature. And I think you learn a lot when you do one-to-one type of healing work. However, you are just stretched far too thin when you try to do it for a lot of people for most of your time. And so I think that's another benefit of creating a deck because you could be helping people when you're sleeping and not even know about it. You know, you could be recharging at the same time while someone is using your cards and diving into the wisdom that you imparted into the deck. And I feel like that's another level of the benefit of just like sharing what you've made across multiple different platforms, multiple different locations in the world, if that's what you want. Because there's also many different avenues that you can take when creating a deck. There's traditional publishing, there's self-publishing, you could do a Kickstarter. There's just multiple ways you can approach it. So there's also like no one size fits all type of way to make a deck. There's pros and benefits of it all. And luckily I've been in self-publishing and I've also done the traditional publishing route. So I can speak to both of those avenues. Actually, at the time of this recording, I'm actually wrapping up a Kickstarter. So there's differences in the first time that I did a Kickstarter and, you know, this time doing a Kickstarter because there's a six year difference and the platform has changed. I think the landscape has changed as well. And so I think it's important that you know, just to be aware of what's going on in the world in terms of like how people are receiving decks. I think at the time when I first created the Mystic Mondays Tarot and launched that on Kickstarter, the landscape was different in terms of there just weren't a lot or many modern tarot decks at the time. So I think that really helped the Mystic Mondays stand out. And nowadays there's like so many beautiful, unique decks in the world. And I love that. I think a general intention inside of our group is the intention to heal and the intention to really, you know, dive into your personal individual journey while, you know, being open and willing to share those vulnerable parts of yourself inside of this group. And I think most of all, there's no time limit in terms of like, sometimes it can take years to complete a deck. And so, and sometimes it can take years to learn aspects of yourself, you know, to, to be on that journey with yourself. And so the time thing, I feel like giving yourself time is a gift in itself because we're often so pressured in our modern day lives to do something quickly and to, you know, get it done by X amount of time. And sometimes it just doesn't work that way. And I think the luxury of being in the Create Your Deck Club is also you have all the time to create your deck the way that you want to create your deck in a way that feels really authentic and nourishing for you. I think that's exactly it. I think the Create Your Tarot Deck Club, the intention of it is around authenticity. Because I think with so, especially with so many design tools out there right now, anybody could sign up to say Canva, create a tarot deck, self-publish it, and then just say, hey, I created a deck. We all have encountered decks that we really connect with. And we've also encountered decks that we don't really connect with. And we've 
encounter decks that are just like you can kind of tell like the essence of it is kind of missing or like the soul is kind of missing it's it's just like a business card or something like that or like a postcard it's a marketing collateral so it makes my heart a little sad that that's where it is but it is also shows how tarot has evolved in the like just the, probably the last decade alone and your club it just naturally draws in people who are healers who want to be of service who are devoted to their craft and really care about sharing something meaningful with the world which is everything <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> same same <laughs> It's important. It's really important to share these aspects of ourselves, but also to share our journey, you know, through the cards, because you never know who that's going to help or who really needs to hear that message. And, you know, it could be potentially life changing for someone to come across that specific card that day, or, you know, find your deck in a store or find your deck online or something like that. And yeah, you just never know. I never thought I'd be doing this, by the way. So I'm a testament to you never know what can happen, but tarot does that. <laughs> and especially if you choose to make your own deck, I feel like it can be really life changing in a lot of ways. And a lot of beautiful things can unfold, not just the tower moments, but also the world moments and the chariot moments and the magician moments. And there's just so many beautiful things that can come of it if you just say yes, like you did. Yeah. Totally. And not to knock on Canva and like even AI tools. Like I know people who are using AI to create tarot decks right now. They've been open about it. It's not the tool. It's not about the tool. It's about your intention. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, I feel like it's really interesting. And that's a really great <laughs> conversation to have about intention and AI. <laughs> yeah, that's like a whole other conversation. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Justine. This was absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that you're a part of the club. You're such a great addition, adding your presence, your feedback, and your authenticity. So I just want to thank you. Thanks for having me. I just feel really lucky, hashtag blessed, to just be part of <laughs> this club. And yeah, also be part of your journey in a very like indirect way. Yeah, for sure. Well, you are here. You are here in a direct way. So, <laughs> Well, I feel hashtag blessed to be part of your journey. Same. Likewise. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode with Justine and hearing about her experience as a member of the Create Your Deck Club, which is part of the Mystic Mondays Coven. Check out the Create Your Deck Club and more information at mysticmondays.com. Sending you grace today and every day. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Remember to subscribe and check out more Grace Podcast episodes for how to apply everyday magic to your everyday life. See you next time.